harbor on one pretext or another after we knew the Japanese fleet had sailed. And we sent the, the new carriers to sea. They were at sea. They weren't in the harbor there. Uh, we knew that the Japanese over the years preceding this, several years preceding, had build, build, been building a new Pacific fleet. They had all new battleships, all new carriers, they had new destroyers, they had, and, and they were building wholesale, and they had a big fleet and all new equipment. Our Navy strategists knew that we couldn't win any battles with them because their educated equipment didn't have the firepower, and didn't have the speed, and didn't have a lot of things, and if we, if, if we actually engaged in a conflict, the, the Japanese are going to best us. So, we invited or we ordered all of our ships into Pearl Harbor after we knew the Japanese were on their way to attack and, and let them sink them. We didn't tell the people in Pearl Harbor that they were coming, although Washington they knew this for two days before they got there. And they even knew the timetable. They knew when they were going to attack. They didn't tell anybody out there. And we, we lost we lost most of our capital ships, but guess what happened? Just what the strategists thought. Roosevelt was one of them. They thought, we can't win a Pacific War with the fleet that we've got. We've got to have a new fleet. We can't build a new fleet in time. We can't get the American public to finance it unless we really get them behind us. So we'll sacrifice the old fleet. It's not going to, any good, going to do us any good anyway. Let the Japanese sink it. Let them claim their victory, and then we'll marshal the public behind us and rebuild it and then go back and come which is what we did. We, we built a whole new fleet and went out there with more than the Japanese had, more and newer and, and won a war. And so they were willing to sacrifice all those servicemen and... Absolutely. They did. And so we took the black eye just so we could marshal the public, be, get the public behind us to, to win the war. Uh, I think, in my own mind, I think that our strategists are do, they were doing the same thing all over again with the Twin Towers. Uh, we tried the same thing with the Twin Towers. I think we think we gambled the Twin Towers for the same reason this time, but too much evidence is out there to show that we were complicit in the crime. I don't think that a bunch of ragtag Arabs got in there and, and hijacked five airplanes all in one morning and, and successfully carried off attacks on the Twin Towers and the Pentagon. We don't have positive proof that they, we allowed Pearl Harbor to happen, but I, I think the record would show, if, if they released all the records, that, that we were aware of it, that we decided to do nothing, let the Japanese attack, and even brought the ships into, into the harbor for to lose them, knowing that we couldn't fight a, a winning battle with the old ships. Mysterious, luminous green orbs of considerable size began to appear across the planet during World War II. The orbs became known as Foo Fighters and ever increasingly appeared in the skies during ugly military air battles over Europe. Greenish glowing globes were sighted as early as September 1941 in the Indian Ocean by members of the British Navy. Pilots were buzzed above the Timor Sea near New Guinea in February 1942 and both the U.S. military and the people of Los Angeles were spooked by a Foo Fighter flyover on February 25, 1942 which made for alarming headlines. In August 1944, a B-29 crew between Sumatra and Salone encountered a brightly throbbing sphere, which paced the bomber and its crew for eight minutes, even following along the B-29 precisely, for a number of maneuvers and altitude changes. Glowing globes were observed by Canadian military outside Antwerp, Belgium in September 1944, and in December 1944, the New York Times reported that pilot Lieutenant Donald Myers claimed that he and his plane were chased and pursued for 20 miles down the Rhine River by Foo Fighters. During the daylight as American shock troops invaded Okinawa in May 1945, bright gold balls whizzed overhead in straight-line groups tracked by a variety of Allied radars at over 600 miles per hour. The Foo Fighters would appear as varying numbers of glowing orbs, moving in intelligently controlled fashion at speeds beyond our capabilities, sometimes blinking out, often glowing with bright greens, reds, oranges, yellows, and whites. Some theorized that the Foo Fighters were Nazi-engineered aircraft which flew without leaving a footprint to radar. Plasma electrical discharges do not chase crews for 20 miles up the Rhine River. Could the orbs be something as exotic as science fiction sounding con-